It's about the kingdom. And when will you make time to share my gospel? Make time to point the lost to a brighter day in eternity. Oh, and this is not a game. And this is not a chance to see the spotlight. It's not about a church that seats a thousand or a choir that sings on the key. It's about the kingdom. And when will you make time to share my gospel? Make time to point the lost to a brighter day in eternity and make time for me. When will you make time for me? in the fatness. You know what I'm saying? So ultimately, there, there's no process, man. It's, it's a immediate submission to God, willing to cut out anything in your life. If something's causing you to sin, you give it up. You immediately surrender it. You don't hold on to it and keep saying, oh, I, I can't help it. It's not my fault. I, oh, I was born this way. I get the, finding excuses to hold on to. You let it go. You push it away. You just, you just give it up. You surrender it. That's why my sign says surrender all to Jesus, because that's what you have to do to be born again. You gotta just give it all up. Yeah. Amen. Well, I, I get where you come from, and I agree with a lot of what you're saying. Sure. Put, put sin to death and maturity. I guess I, but from what, as, as a brother, I'm just asking for what it. Of course. What you're saying, I, and this is no defense of sin. I guess, you're fine. You're I, fine. I, guess, I guess I try to give, from when I look at scripture, I try to give a little, little bit more of a, um, I try to be careful, you know, and I, I definitely think it's wrong to people not, not to knock it off, you know. I guess I give people a little more grace on all that from, Scripture view because you got Apostle Paul, he's addressed he's addressing the church of the Corinth. Yeah. Church Corinth is obviously operating the whole bunch of gifts of the Holy Spirit of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Yep. He's going through corrects and cut cut people off. Yep. But in the midst of it, he still considers them and I as I don't believe in like you just continue go go going on. But he, but, but he still calls them <laughs> listen, he still calls them brothers and sisters. Yeah, and, and even identifies them as, as saints. And when Apostle Paul addresses for the repent, most no, but, times he's but addressing you, do, the but, but do you remember what he and, said in Romans six nine? I mean, in, yeah. uh, sorry, in uh, Corinthians six nine, go ahead. where, where go, he, go, go, he go. said to them, after saying, "Be yeah. not deceived," and then listing a group of people who won't, who won't inherit the kingdom: homosexuals, liars, fornicators, drunkards, thieves. He says to them, "And as were some of you." And when he says that, that's an open admission that they are no longer doing those things. That's why he calls them brothers and sisters. If they were still doing those things, Paul would not consider them brothers and sisters. Like he just wouldn't do it. I mean, you could see Galatians, he, when he's writing to the church in Galatia, he says to them in uh, Galatian, uh, Galatians 2, 17, if we, while seeking to be justified by Christ, are found ourselves to be sinners, what then? Is Christ a minister of sin? God forbid. If I build back the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. So no, he's not calling them brothers and sisters while they're still in sin. He's calling them brothers and sisters because they're not walking in sin. Sure, sure. Yeah. Follow Jesse Morrell a lot, don't you? No, I, I don't know who that is. Oh, okay. No, no. I, I just, I follow the Bible. I follow Jesus. <laughs> I follow Jesus, bro. <laughs> Amen. Hey, no, it's, it's, it's nice it's, to talk to you, man. Hey, love you, man. Yeah. Adam, right? Yes, sir. Love you too, bro. God bless you, man. It was good to talk to you, man. Don't forget to give uh, Mr. Alex that card I gave you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God bless you, all right? Testing. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord Jesus Christ out here tonight. It is a wonderful night to be alive in Greenville, South Carolina. It's beautiful out. It's fall. It's, not, it's, it's a nice, cool, comfort, comfortable temperature. You know, what are you doing to, to bless the Lord God who gave you these things? You've got a freedom to drive your car, the freedom to walk around in a country where you can say whatever you want to, uh, to say. You can express your opinions to whoever you feel the need to express them to. How are you glorifying the Lord Jesus Christ out here tonight? Do you know who uh, Jesus Christ is? Do you know what, uh, what he came into the world to do? Are you familiar with his death, burial, and resurrection? Are you familiar with what he came to accomplish? To do away with the works of the, uh, of the uh, adversary? To get rid of evil from this world? To conquer death? Right? The, a lot of people nowadays say that the Bible was rewritten, that history was rewritten. Well, guess what? History is written by the victors. Jesus Christ is the ultimate victor. He had victory over death. So the Bible was written after Jesus Christ. And he wrote that story through holy men inspired by the Holy Spirit. We know that the word of God is true and we know that God rose from the dead. This is a historical fact. It's documented in history, right? And so my question to you tonight is, do you believe history? 
Do you follow Jesus Christ? Are you obeying God today? Are you walking out here to glorify God or are you walking out here to, to spend time with yourself and your family? There's nothing wrong with spending time with your family. There's nothing wrong with being alone with yourself. But if you spend that time with your family or yourself more than God, or you love your family or yourself more than God, you're not worthy to be his disciple. That's what Jesus said. He said, unless you hate your father, mother, brother, sister, son, daughter, wife, or even your very own life also, you are not worthy to be my disciple. You must love God before you love your children. You must love God before you love your spouse. You must love God more than your parents. You must love God more than your very own life also. And if you don't, you're not following Jesus. I can tell you this out of personal experience. I was a wicked sinner before I came to God. Before I came to Jesus, I was probably worse off than most of the people out here tonight. I was addicted to drugs. I, I was uh, addicted to a late night click click on the uh, internet. I was addicted to all kinds of curse words and revilery towards people I disagreed with. Man, uh, I was so wicked. But Jesus Christ set me free from all of those sins. I don't walk in those sins anymore. I repented of them and I stopped doing them. And this is what the Bible teaches. And a lot of people, they have this uh, Burger King gospel nowadays where they have it your way gospel where they get to believe whatever they want about the Bible. But the Bible says what the Bible says. The Bible says that you cannot continue to walk in sin and expect to have salvation. It's very simple. The Bible shows over and over. Romans chapter 6, Galatians chapter 2, you have 1 Corinthians chapter 6, uh, Romans chapter 1. We, we have all these different books in the Bible. Uh, uh, John, Jesus talks about in the book of John uh, chapter 5 and chapter 8 to go and sin no more. We have all these different scriptures in the Bible that tell you do not sin. Don't walk in sin. Don't do it. Yet people continue to do this. Why? Because they believe in a God that just forgives them no matter what they do. That just accepts them however they are. But God doesn't accept you just the way you are. God is the most exclusive person in the universe. God is very exclusive. He does not welcome anybody into his kingdom. No, you must do the will of the Father to enter into the kingdom. Don't believe me? Go to Matthew chapter 7. Jesus says in Matthew 7, 24, he says, not all who say to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into my kingdom. Only those who do the will of my Father that is in that kingdom. Many will say in those last days, Lord, Lord, have we not cast out demons for you and done mighty miracles and works in your name? Jesus doesn't deny that they did those works. No, he responds to them by saying, depart from me, you who work sin. I don't know you. That's scary. Imagine you live your life thinking you're okay with God and you keep doing whatever you want to do, fulfilling the lusts of the flesh and the lusts of the eyes and the pride of life, doing whatever you feel like doing and just repenting every once in a while and just feel okay with God and you say you're a Christian, you go to your church on Sunday and you die and stand before this holy righteous God and he says to you, depart from me, you that work sin. I don't know you. That's a scary thought. I pray out here tonight that nobody, nobody has to go through that. So God has sent me out here tonight to tell you his true word, the true gospel that's in the Bible. You don't need me. You can read this Bible yourself and see it. But I'm, I'm going to assume the reason God sent me out here is because a lot of people out here tonight probably don't read God's word. They probably don't read the scriptures. They probably don't read the Bible. Jesus said in uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, to be ye therefore perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Are you perfect? Jesus says you must be. He says you have to be perfect to enter the kingdom. Jesus says in uh, Matthew chapter 5, verse 20, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will in no wise enter into the kingdom. Are you righteous? Jesus says you must be righteous. Are you a holy, righteous, perfect person of God? Or are you living for yourself? Are you deceived? The Bible says, be ye not deceived, nor reveler, nor idolater, nor adulterer, nor effeminate, nor homosexual, nor sodomite, nor liar, nor drunkard, nor thief will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Don't be deceived. The Bible says, be ye not deceived. Why? Because this world deceives you into believing these things are okay. This world wants you to believe it's okay to be a homosexual. It's not. The world wants you to believe it's okay to have an abortion. It's not. The Bible says God hates the hands that shed innocent blood. If you murder an innocent baby in the womb, God hates your hands. Why? Because you've killed an innocent life that did not deserve it. The Bible says that you must surrender everything you have to Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, there was a law for tithing. Their people were commanded to, to tithe a certain percentage of what they made, their income. However, in the New Testament, tithing is not in the New Testament. No, the new tithe, the only thing in the New Testament that's required of you is everything, all of it. 
every thought, word, and deed. The Bible says, whether you eat, sleep, or drink, do it to the glory of God. All things that you do, do to the glory of God. The Bible says you must do all things through Christ. It also says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. So if you think it's not possible to walk without sin, just go read the Bible. See what Jesus had to say about it. Jesus was very anti-sin. Jesus was very judgmental. He was very exclusive. He did not accept people just the way they were. He told, he called them to repentance. He rebuked them when they were openly sinning. Jesus Christ was very, very clear about his message. And he was very loving. It's very loving to rebuke someone who's walking in sin. The most loving thing you can do for somebody who's on their way to hell is to tell them about it. If I truly love someone on their way to hell, I won't just pat them on the back and say, keep on going. No, the Bible says faithful are the wounds of a friend rather than the deceitful kisses of an enemy. Jesus was betrayed by a friend because he was kissed on the cheek. Think about that. If you've got a friend that tells you it's okay to be homosexual, it's okay to tell lies or steal something, it's okay to look at those adult websites at night, it's okay to smoke that cigarette or that marijuana, it's okay to take that shot of alcohol and get drunk, that's not a friend. That's an enemy that's deceiving you and kissing you on the cheek. But the Bible says faithful are the wounds of a friend. Why? Because a friend truly cares about you. A friend is going to tell you the truth regardless how it makes you feel because they know that that truth will set you free. The Bible says my people perish for a lack of knowledge. What is knowledge? Knowledge is a likened to wisdom. The Bible says that the fear of the God is the beginning of wisdom. If you're not afraid of God and what he can do to you over sin, you have no knowledge at all. If you think it's okay to be a sinner and, uh, and uh, be a Christian at the same time, you, you don't fear God. The Bible says you believe in one God, it'll serve you well. But even devils believe and still tremble. There's people out here who believe in God and they're not scared of him. I tell you tonight, unless you fear God, you have no wisdom at all. Ecclesiastes, King Solomon says, vanity of vanity, it's all vanity. Let us come to a conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. This is man's all. The Bible commands you to fear God. You're supposed to be afraid of God because uh, the Jesus said, do not fear the man who can kill your body and do nothing to your soul. I will tell you who to fear. Fear God who can kill both the body and the soul in hell for eternity. That's serious. Jesus was serious about sin. The same God that died on the cross for you to set you free from sin flooded the entire world and killed everybody but eight people because of sin. The same God that died on the cross for you to set you free from sin killed the entire race of Canaanites because of their sin. The same God that died on the cross to set you free from sin uh, kicked Adam and Eve out of the Garden of Eden because of their sin. Think about it. What kind of God would literally flood an entire world and kill everybody but eight people over sin and just all of a sudden change his mind and let people walk in sin every day? The Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be in the second coming of the Son of Man. Jesus Christ, when he comes back on the clouds with his thousands, tens of thousands of saints and holy angels of God, the whole world is going to be like it was in the days of Noah, full of sexual immorality, revilers, extortioners, uh, uh, loosely clothed people who hate themselves and hate others. They, they take light for dark and darkness for light. Good for evil and evil for good. They'll practice uh, uh, paganistic holidays and dress up as serial killers and go around laughing about it like it's a big joke, like murder's funny, like scaring little children is a good idea. That's what people do nowadays and they say, it's a, oh, it's just a holiday. Oh, it's no big deal. Oh, it's not that big a deal at all. But did you have children dressing up like Jeffrey Dahmer and people get mad about it? Why get mad? You provoked this. You said it was okay to dress as Jason Voorhees, as Michael Myers, as Freddy Krueger. They all are on screen depicted as murdering people. Now all of a sudden the kid dresses up like a true murderer and you have a problem with it. Think about it. It's because of the society that you peddle. You have to stand up and at some point and say this is not okay. This is ungodly. We cannot teach our children that this is okay. To, to walk around in the world and live the way the world lives. Jesus said that if you love this world or the things of this world, you do not have the love of the Father. For the love of this world is enmity with the Father. The love of the world is at an enemy state with God. That's right. The lusts of the eyes, the lusts of the flesh, and the pride of life are the, are the enmity of God. These things that people live in, where they, they have pride. This, this world is uh, a world full of pride. They say, uh, love is love. What does that even mean? I could say, uh, white is white, black is black, uh, the sky is the sky. That doesn't define it. What is love? The Bible says that love is peace. It's joy. 
It's long suffering. It's suffering for a long time for someone, telling them the truth over and over, regardless how they treat you. It says that it keeps no track of wrongdoings. This is true, but it also relishes in the truth. What is the truth? Jesus said that uh, in the beginning, God made them male and female, that a man shall leave his mother and father and cling to his wife, that marriage was between one man and one woman. Therefore, true love is to tell someone that marriage is, is between one man and one woman. You don't get to make up your own idea of love. No, there's only one definition for love and that's God's definition. God is love. God loves all people. This is the love of God. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us on the cross. Who do you know out here tonight who died for you and rose from the dead? Nobody. You don't know a single person who ever died for you. But I can tell you right now, Jesus Christ died for you and he rose from the dead. What are you doing to glorify Jesus tonight? Are you glorifying the world in your fake costumes and your cosplay dressing up as TV shows that mock God? Or are you living for God? You know that finger's gonna fall off on Judgment Day, dude. It's gonna fall off, both of them. You're gonna cry like a little baby because you heard the gospel and turned away from it, and God's gonna laugh at you as he binds you up and casts you into hell. But I don't want that for you. I want you to live holy for God. I want you to live as a saint of the Lord Jesus Christ who can walk holy and respect people and give them a, a, a true, true love where they tell them the truth regardless how it makes them feel. That's what the Bible describes as a person who truly loves their neighbor. I have to, if I love my neighbor as myself, I have to tell them the truth. I can't sugarcoat or candy coat the gospel and tell them, oh, God loves you just the way you are. You're one in a million. God accepts you just in how you are. You were born perfect. There's nothing wrong with you. you God, you just, just keep on praying. Keep on praying. Don't worry about the masturbation and the drugs. Don't, don't worry about the alcohol and the, the cursing and the, the lasciviousness. Nah, don't worry about it. God loves you and accepts you just the way you are. That's, that's not true. That's a mamsy pamsy, make you feel good, tickle your ears, jelly bean filled gospel, Burger King gospel, have it your way. That's not what Jesus Christ did. Jesus said, you brood of vipers, you whitewashed tombs, you hypocrites. How can you being evil speak good things? You must make the tree good and its fruit good or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For a tree is known by its fruits. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart will bring forth good things. An evil man, out of the evil treasure of his heart, will bring forth evil things. For I say unto you, every word that a man may utter in this life, he will give an account for in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. You must turn to Jesus. You can't take that car horn with you. You can't do it. You can't take your car with you to heaven. There's no gasoline in heaven. No, there's only worshiping God for all eternity, forever and ever. If you can't stand the worship and praise of God out here on a street corner tonight, there's no way you're going to last in heaven. Nope, because in heaven, we get to sing, holy, 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 holy is the Lord our God for all eternity, nonstop. There'll be no more night. There'll be no more, uh, uh, no more temptation. There'll be no more suffering. All there's going to be is the worship of God for all eternity. And if you can't stand it on a street corner for a few minutes at night, then there's no way you're going to want to spend eternity with God in heaven. But God loves you and he wants you to be in heaven with him. He wants to take all of your pain and suffering away. He wants to give you a supernatural peace, joy, and long suffering. A supernatural ability to be happy regardless of what happens to you. This is what the Bible teaches, that you get supernatural joy. Do you love the Lord Jesus Christ? What are you doing in the name of Jesus out here tonight? Ask yourself this question. It's very serious. Now is the time. Now is the day of salvation Now is the time for these dark